You're likely all familiar with Microsoft Planner, but what can the PMO learn from this application in order to support the organization the best way possible? In this video, I'm going to give you the ultimate guide on how to use Microsoft Planner with a PMO uh, mindset. Let's go. Just like any modern application from Microsoft, Microsoft Planner is something that can be accessed through Microsoft Teams. Currently, the application is called Tasks by Planner and To Do. Probably the well, probably one of the worst names that people could choose, but it did tell you what it actually entailed. The current application looks at everything you have in your To Do application as well as in your Planner application. But if we zoom out, we'll see that a new Planner experience is coming soon to Microsoft Teams. Well. That is not only true for Microsoft Teams, it's also going to come to your web application in the future. Only true for Microsoft Teams, it's also going to come to your web application in the future. I'm actually doing this video because there is a big change coming up for Planner, as well as Project for the Web, as well as To Do. There's going to be a consolidation of these three applications into one experience, a new planner experience. There's a link to the learn more. I put that in the show notes as well. And what we're seeing here is all my tasks that are personal to me. I'm logged in with my Projectum account. And what I'm seeing here is my day, my tasks and something called AI related. It's more interesting for the PMO to see shared plans. And if I open that up, I can see all the plans that I have access to. Now be aware that this is linked up to Microsoft Office Groups or Microsoft 365 Groups. That means that every time you have access to one of these groups, you can see shared plans. Now on the center stage, we see a backlog, a demo Friday, a pilot, future sprints. And in this section, we see cards, which is the main component of a planner. There's different features in there, such as the per, uh, percentage complete. Um, there's a tick box there. There's due date. There's images. There is a priority. There's action items. And we'll cover all of these during the course of this video. Apart from the entry point of Microsoft Teams, there's also a web browser experience. When I navigate to tasks.office.com, I might be prompted to log in to my account. After logging in, you'll get this experience. This is the Planner Hub page. It contains all the information from all the shared plans, the Microsoft Teams experience, only we also see a subsection of recent plans that we've accessed and we might be able to interact with directly. And there is a pinned section. What I like about the pinned section is that you get a clean overview of how we're progressing throughout our project. We'll see if plans are delayed or late. We see how much progress has been done uh, as a whole in a pie chart. There's also a button here that says assign to me. This gives me a clean overview of everything that I've started, not started or completed. And this goes across the different plans that we have. And in the near future, when we have the new planner experience, this will cover project for the web uh, assignments. This will cover to do's. This will cover plans as well. So this will be a consolidated assign to me for everything you're doing in the Microsoft ecosystem. There's a way to visualize this in a grid and there's a way to see charts on how we're doing. There's also a schedule. And as Greg mentioned in one of the comments on the YouTube channel, this is not a Gantt chart schedule. This is a calendar. If you want to go for Gantt charts, that is a premium feature that is within the project for the web experience, as we know. It does, however, give us a good overview of the items that are on my plate for February. Now, if we navigate back to the hub, this could be the hub where you as a PMO have access to all the plans that you have in the organization through the Microsoft 365 group 
that you have access to, and you can pin the most important plans on this front page. Now, of course, there's something about licenses, and I have the licenses that are aligned with Planner on screen right now. I won't go too deep into the details of licensing because frankly, I'm, I'm not a licensing expert, but if you have one of these licenses, you will have access to Planner and to do. And if you have an additional license, a project plan one, three or five, you will also have access to project for the web. That licensing structure might change in the near future when we have the new planner experience. And if it does, I'll put a note in the comments down below to give you a guidance on the new licensing structure. Now that we got the basics covered, let's zoom into a creation of a new plan. If I click on new plan, I get the option to use templates. Now, these are Microsoft design templates for a simple plan, a project management uh, endeavor, or maybe employee onboarding. It also shows you that there's a nice way to visualize these plans with a nice layout. For me, I want to start with a blank plan and walk you through the different components within the solution. Now, the second page gives us the option to give the plan a name, and it also gives us a option to add to an existing group and tell if it's a private or a sensitive plan. So let's first look at the privacy and sensitivity, where you can state that it is a private plan or if it's a public plan. The moment that you choose to have this as a public plan, let me just hover over this here. Public plans allow everyone in the organization to see the plan. So if there's no reason for security on the plan, you can choose to have it public and everyone in the organization will be able to access that and interact with that. However, if you choose to have it as a private plan, that plan is only accessible to the users you give access to. Now, there's two ways to go about. You can add user access. The first time you do that, it will create a new Microsoft 365 group. Or you can choose to have it added at an existing group. So for instance, for me, I would be interested in adding this to the projectum group and specifically to the Dutch projectum group. Once I do that, you'll see that the privacy and sensitivity is actually grayed out. What happens is the group takes precedence over privacy and sensitivity. Everyone within the group will now have access to that team's plan. If you are in a PMO, and you have the whole project management group assigned in one Microsoft Teams structure that also aligns to a Microsoft 365 group and thereby it also aligns to something that you can add plans to, giving direct access to your users to actually use that plan straight away. So let's create a plan. When you've selected the plan, to be part of a group, you'll automatically see that the group has its associated image in here. And the members of the group are also stated as being members of your plan. On the top left, you'll see the name of the plan. You'll see the name of the office group that you're assigned to. And there's a little eye here that tells you that this is a private group that you need to be a part of through the Microsoft 365 group settings. There's a section with grid, board, charts, and schedule. And there is an ellipsis that you can use to fold out and give more and get more access to different elements within the plan. We'll cover a couple of these in this video. Now, as I already mentioned, we'll see the members of the group in here. And those are also members of my plan. I can immediately assign these users to any of the plans that uh, any of the plan tasks that I'll create during this video. There's a filter and there is a group by option here as well. Now, seeing as Planner is a lightweight, agile application, it makes sense to use the board interface. In the board interface, we already have a to do bucket 
and we can add additional buckets by clicking on the add new bucket. Adding buckets is really easy. As you can see, all I have a doing now, final check and a completed bucket. Now the completed bucket is optional because if you check mark a task as being completed, it will automatically strike through and and land in the bottom of that specific bucket. On top of all of these, we'll see a add task button. If we click on add task, we get a um, we get a small pop up section where we can say task one, we can start by setting it a due date, let's set that to tomorrow, and I can assign this to me. Now remember the assign to me is something that will also pop up in your hub and it will also pop up in your Microsoft Teams. So let's add that. And my first task is now created. I can also add additional resources if I need to. But for now, let's keep it at just me doing this task. There's an option here to click on the ellipsis and get it more options. And without going into the task itself, you'll have quick actions that you can do. You can assign, you can copy task, you can copy link to a task for communication purposes, for instance. You can move a task to any of the other buckets and you can create a label. This label has any number of colors that are here and labels can be relabeled to anything else. So we can rename the pink label to be something that we as an organization need. More information is available once I click in the center of that task. In this task menu, I see more information that I can fill in. I can see the bucket, the progress priority, a start date, which is not mandatory, a due date, which is also not mandatory. And if it is a repeat task, there's an additional notes section, a checklist and an attachments option. Then bottom half is comments and there is an option to add suggested attachments. So I can add the project line to Power PPM PowerPoint presentation. And if I do so, that is then attached to our task. What you'll see is that there is a show on card option. This will show up at, as we add more information. I can also add notes here. And instead of having the attachment show on card, I can choose to show the notes on card. And there's only room or real estate for one thing that we can show on the card from the main page. So I choose to have that notes on the card. If I move away, I'll see that add a note here. If I click on it again, and if I click on the attachments, show on card, I'll see those attachments. If there is an image available, it will showcase that image uh, instead of having a, a link to an Outlook document. If I select a start date at any time and set that, for instance, to Monday, what will happen to the schedule is it will actually show me a longer task for that duration of that, that activity. So this is somewhat like a Gantt chart bar, but it still is a calendar view that we're looking at. So let's navigate back to the board or let's see what happens if we look at the grid view. So the grid view is a table view of our activities. It has the basic set of information such as who's assigned, who does what, when, and in what bucket is it currently residing in. There's an easy, easy interface for us to state, okay, well, this is now in progress and we can change the priority. Other than that, the board view has more interaction capabilities. If I click on the check mark here, I'll hear a ping, I'll get a flashy light, and it tells me that this is now our first completed task. 
coming back to that to complete it bucket is actually obsolete. So let's remove that. And I'll click on delete. For the second task, I've added a couple of things. I've added two resources to be assigned to do activities here. Now, mind you, there is no separation on the assignment of how much work Gerwin is going to do compared to me. The first person that changes the progress is the person that probably has done something. And there is only three options here. There's not started, in progress and completed. Further detail can, of course, be added through the project for the web interface, where we have assignments on different levels for different people on tasks. But for planner, we have three options, not started, in progress and completed. What you'll also see is that I've changed the name of the pink uh, label, as well as creating a label for a green value. Now changing the names of these labels are local to the plan that you're in. This is not across the organization. So that means that if I select yellow, change that name, it will be local to that selected plan. And I can add this label or I can not select it. But if I reselect it, I'll see that new name for this plan specifically. Now there is a trick and I'll come back to that later in this video where we can actually create somewhat of a template to actually retain these labels. But let's move on to other parts of this setup for the second task. We still have a start date, we still have a due date, but that due date is now in the past and we haven't started yet. That means that we have a marker telling us that we're actually late to complete this task. The priority is set to urgent and it is still not a repeated task. I've added a notes and one of the things that I really like about Planner is this checklist option. I can create a sub list of activities that I need to do and that list can contain a number of values. And if at some point in the future, I would like to have this as a, as a separate activity, so let's call this third task, there is an option to upgrade or promote this checklist item to become its own task. It will be removed from the checklist and it will show up in the same bucket where it comes from. So now you see that, that a third task is here as well. I also have an image here now that if I select that, I will have that image show up in a little box for that task. Visually appealing, I would say, but I do want to have functionality. So the functionality here is the checklist can also be shown on the card itself. So if I navigate up and I close the dialog box, here we see that second task. I already see the top half being linked up to the labels. I see who's working on it. It's an urgent task. It has an attachment. It has five checklist items of one that is completed. And if I check these individual items, I'll see that uh, increase on the check marks and the progress that I'm doing there. If I open this checkbox, if I open this task, I'll also see that little progress bar on the checklist items. Now, mind you, this is not a update for the whole task. I can do all the checklist items without even having changed the progress bar here. Once again, if I set this to in progress, I leave just one of these items here. I can close the checkbox close the dialog box and I can see that four out of five activities are done and I am still in progress. I've added more tasks in the plan and they're a little bit different. Each of them have their own bucket, their own progress, their own little details here. I did this because I wanted to show you what the difference is for the different groups. So currently they're grouped by buckets. 
if I click on the assign to, we'll see who gets to do which task. And as you can see, the bottom task, the second task, is assigned to both myself and Gerwin. It's assigned to both Gerwin and myself. So we both see that task. And this is the same task. So if we change the priority of that, we'll see that change happen on both of them. Let me change this third task to be urgent. And we'll see that urgent popping up as soon as we search or group by priority. Here we see priority urgent is the first line, of course, or is the first column, of course. Then we have important, medium and low tasks in this grouping. We also have the ability to group by labels, due date, progress and assign to labels, due date, and progress. And I particularly like the due date option here because it tells me which tasks are late, which is going to happen today, tomorrow, this week, or things in the future. So it immediately tells me where I need to focus on. And I can further differentiate by selecting all the tasks that I am assigned to. And I see that I have a late task with Gerwin as well as a two tasks to do tomorrow, and I have a future task as well. So filtering and grouping is a very nice way of dissecting what you actually need to do. To unselect, I can either click on the clear button or I can deselect the selection that I've done previously. Now with more information, I can now have a look at the different pages here. I can also take another look at the hub where I pinned this task and I can see that that little dial or that donut shaped visual now tells us more. It tells us that there's two tasks late, two in progress, two are not started and three are complete. So we're moving ahead quite nicely. There's a grid view, which again gives me the overall information it does show you nicely that you're having that that you have tasks that are late. It also has that priority list. There is no group by or sort by in this section. You do still have the filter option though, so that is a nice feature. But there's no way of sorting this page. Then we have the charts, which is the default chart that you see on the hub main page as well and there's more information so we have buckets we have priority and we have the members that are doing the work it starts with not started then it tells you what's late and then progress and completed tasks this page you can also filter by only looking at what needs to be done this week or tomorrow if we see tomorrow, we see that I have a number of tasks to do. Clearing the filter and moving to the schedule page. Once again, this is not a GAN chart, but this is a calendar visualization of my tasks to do. I can navigate as with any calendar visual between these weeks and months. I can have a look at week basis. I can have a look at month basis. Now there's also the ellipsis here. The ellipsis gives me more information. The top half of this is all bound to the Microsoft 365 group that you have. So the team and L for projectum has conversation, members, files, notebook, and sites. These are tied into the Microsoft 365 group, so they can also be accessed through Teams and Outlook, which is the locations that they will navigate to. Files, of course, is a SharePoint thing. Notebook is an Outlook thing. Um, notebook is a OneNote thing, and Sites is, again, SharePoint. Then there's a number of ways of copying or exporting your data. 
The copy plan option is just what it says. It copies this plan, everything that's in there, and creates a duplicate for you. So let's create the duplicate. You can, again, select a different group, and you can select what to include in our plan. There's a drop down box that you can close and open. And there's an option to create a new group, which is also very useful, of course. If I click on copy plan, a new plan will be created with this name. So make sure that you have a nice name for that plan. This is a great way to design a template file for everyone in your organization. Then there is a copy plan to project. Now this is an upgrade feature where the plan is moved to project for the web and it gives you the project for the web features. So let's see what happens if I click on copy pl plan to project. A new page opens and it imports the plan and it tells me that it takes a few minutes. Let's let's give it that time. And here you already see that the plan and the project have different features. And here we go. We have a project that is copied from the original plan. The changes won't affect the original plan. Also, your team won't see assignments until you share the project. So that is good to know. We're back at Project for the Web, of which we are familiar. Uh, the visual does look a little bit different. We see that we landed straight into the GAN chart, which is a feature that isn't available in Microsoft Planner, of course. If we navigate back to the board, we'll see those features that we had already. Um, the grid is the same, but here we do have the option to hide and we do have the option to add columns that we want to add here. There's also a list of people doing what, doing when. There's the additional charts. There's the option to add goals. And there is an assignments table here as well. Now, by default, the tasks will consider every task to be a full time commitment. So these hours might not ring true for your organization or for this type of plan. One of the core features, you now have a Gantt chart, which you can leverage. Now, you'll see that there's a lot of milestones here, and that is because I only set the due date and not the, the start date as well. So here, if it's in progress, it's 50% done. If it's 100% complete, of course, it's fully, fully completed. And if it hasn't been started, it's 0% complete. Now with project, you'll have more capabilities of setting this to 75% complete, for instance. And that trickles down into our board view as well. Where we now see that it has 75%. Let's navigate back to our plan and let's see what other options we had. So we demonstrated copy plan to create a plan template. We have the copy plan to project to get to get the extended features such as a GAN chart and more details on assignments. And we also have the export plan to Excel. Let's click on that and see what happens. There's a little button here that sh says that it's exporting. There's an export available here at my downloads. If I click on open file, we'll see more information about our plan. We see the tasks with a task UID, which is important for Power BI, of course, of which we have another example later. Um, 
and more information on all our tasks. It has the descriptions in there, it has the labels, checklist items, percentage complete, well, completed, uh, completed checklist items, all the information that you've seen in the plan itself is available here. Now, if I navigate to the plan name, it tells me more information about the plan. It gives you the name, it gives you the UID, which is of course, again, important for Power BI and the date of export, which is also nice so that you know which version of the plan you're actually looking at. If I click on close, Let's have another look at what else we have as availability here. So copy link to plan is a nice one where if I copy that link to the clipboard and if I navigate to loop, I can now navigate to an idea and create a new idea. And if I copy that link to the project, I now have a loop component. And that loop component, of course, works just like any other loop component that we mentioned in the previous video. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes for that. It is fully interactive. I can now work within loop, add more details, add other components such as a draft of page content, summarize the page, and maybe add a checklist, maybe add a call out, maybe add some code even. There's dividers, headers, uh, there's a lot that you can do with loop. I'm not going to cover that in this video though. There's another video on the channel for that. Clicking on add, let's add the 12th task from loop. Let's assign a due date for tomorrow. Let's assign that to me. Let's click on add. There's the 12th task. And if I close that and I go back to my board view, I'll see that that 12th task is now added through loop. So this gives us more flexibility to work with our plans through through copying that link. Finally, there is a plan settings and the plan settings gives us the option to change the name of our plan and change the layout, which is also nice here. We have a couple of ways to look at our plan, either clean or I like this one. There's also notifications here. And if you're not a group owner, you won't be able to send emails to assign or complete tasks. Have planner send me a notification when someone assigns a task to me, I'll deselect that. The task assigned to me is late due today or due in next seven days, emails only. That is an option that you can select on a personal level to get more notifications on this plan. Let's click on save. Then there's one last thing that I want to share with you and I'll give full credits to Ben Howard for this because he created another video of which there's a link in the show notes, of course, on how to visualize your planner files in Power BI. Let me make sure that you actually do see this picture. So here is an example of that dashboard that you can create. It looks similar to the planner status, but this is across different plans. So this gives us an enterprise overview of what we have. And there is also additional pages available. So this is page two of seven even. So there's more information that you can gather using his template. Again, there's a link in the show notes and there's also a GitHub page that you can use to get more information on that to get the file itself, as well as some explanations. And please make sure to download this because it's an excellent addition to your uh, reporting overviews. Now, this has been a, a longer video covering important topics for Planner. I hope you liked it. I had a lot of fun dissecting everything that I found interesting for the PMO to know about Planner. I'm excited for the next step planner merging with to do and merging with project for the web. Um, more on that later, of course, for now, thanks very much for watching this video. Hit that like button if you did. 
and I hope to see you next time.